Okay, so without further ado, I would like to give thanks to our three presenters, um, and then I'll let them introduce themselves. So we will have a presentation um, presented by Chief Mass Sergeant Rutland. Um, thank you for joining us, sir. We also have uh, Senior Mass Sergeant Bazil, I believe I'm saying that right, and then uh, Master Sergeant Graham, all representative of the top three and all those who uh, reached out and said they would be more than willing to uh, educate us on the EPB process. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over the mic to you, Chief Rutland, uh, for any introductions that you would like to make, Chief, and then we'll take it from there. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. Hey, first off, I want to say, hey, hey, thank you, Sar Sergeant Shanklin, for uh, reaching out, uh, giving me the opportunity to be a part of uh, this platform, along with some of our uh, stellar uh, leaders. Uh, happy to share this with them. Uh, I'm Chief Master Sergeant Wayne Rutland. I've been in AFRS a little bit over 17 years, about 17 and a half to be exact. So uh, broad experience with recruiting. Obviously, I have to have a passion for it uh, to have stayed and stuck around this long uh, period of time. I've served at every uh, echelon, uh, every tier uh, within recruiting service. Uh, so I started out as that tier one recruiter, uh, hit every tier after that until I uh got lucky enough to be selected uh, as an SEL. So currently I'm out in the 319th recruiting squadron as the SEL for them, but I'm also the associate chief for the 317th recruiting squadron as well. So I'm holding down two forts. Uh, so this is a great opportunity because it allows me to kind of expand, uh, you know, that mentorship uh, and my leadership and guidance uh, so that I can actually, uh, uh, one, uh, be able to take what I know, uh, share it with others, and also be able to understand uh, some of those challenges from two different uh, distinct uh, different AORs as well. So that kind of helps me. And so whatever I learn, whatever I'm absorbing, I'm always uh, wanting to give back uh, to that next generation of leaders, uh, up and coming leaders. So uh, that's it. That's a bit for me. I'll turn it over to uh, with that Sarn, Sarn Bazil. Thank you so much, Chief. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm really thrilled with the numbers I'm seeing. Um, there's, there's so many opportunities for, for mentorship and development, and I'm thrilled that you all are tuning in to capture that. Um, so I'm Senior Master Sergeant Dana Bazil. Um, I've been in AFRS for just over 13 years. Uh, I started off doing tier one out in Yonkers, New York in 313, hung out there for four years and loved it so much, I stuck around for another four. So I did a flight chief down in Brooklyn, New York, uh, then I came out here to group headquarters uh, to run the operations flight. Uh, after that, I went out to California and I did pro soup for 362 for a couple years. Uh, we covered down in um, Ca uh, Southern California and Arizona. And then I came right on back to the 360th group, came back home. Um, and here I'm in charge of uh, operations and training um, and working with the, the pro soups out here across the 360th. Um, I love recruiting. Um, it was a rocky road at first. Um, had to fall down a couple of times before I could climb back up. Um, but I, I really have loved it uh, over these 13 years. I've learned a lot. I've been mentored by a lot of uh, great folks. Um, and I'm excited to help you guys in any way that I can provide any insights or, or guidance as you're working on this new uh, performance reporting process. Um, there's, you know, some very key changes that I think um, will help to capture uh, a more clear picture of uh, who each of us uh, is and what we have to contribute to the fight. Um, so hopefully this uh, conversation will provide some clarity um, and, and needed uh, guidance as you go forth in, in preparing your records. That's all, I'll toss the baton over. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So um, Matt Sergeant Graham from the 314th F Flight Flight Chief. I've been in AFRS for six years. Uh, started out in Huber Heights, Ohio, Tier 1, and I came here in uh, January of 21. Um, love AFRS, love recruiting. That's why I'm still here. Uh, eight years in C prior to coming into recruiting. Um, just happy to be here, happy to share my knowledge, my thought process. I try to keep a uh, well-rounded process uh, when writing and, and thinking so that it can reach the masses. Um, I have two babies. They tried to hate on me today. They know I had some work that I was excited to do, but they had to pick them up from daycare. So I said, man, I'm still going to figure out a way. Um, so it's nap time and I'm here. I'm just happy to be here and I wouldn't want to spend, you know, their nap time without you guys. So let's get it. 
Awesome. Thank you, leaders. So without further ado, team, we're going to go ahead and transition right into um, the presentation. So, Chief, I'll hand it over to you and your team, how you guys want to present it. Um, but this is Understanding Your EPB. All right. So, uh, you know, from the way that I typically like to, you know, engage in these uh, in, in, in these uh, discussions is just having a discussion. Right. So uh, the best way to learn together is have, uh, you know, like I kind of stole from the Sims have uh, having real talk. You know, uh, this is the, the best opportunity. So I understand that there are some, you know, some folks that may have questions, uh, may have some, uh, you know, some, some ambiguity. There's a lot of uncertainty about the EPBs. Uh, and so what I want to do is, you know, not, you know, be too long winded, uh, but also kind of start now kind of sharing, giving you my thought process and then allow uh, the other two panel members to give their thought process on the EPB and then go right into these prompted, the prompted questions of, uh, that you have for us, Sergeant Shanklin. So, um, you know, for me, when you think about this, this, this transition from a EP, from this EPR to the EPB, uh, I want you to understand that, you know, by no, by no means is this a perfect solution, uh, you know, uh, nor, uh, do we consider this to be the perfect transition? Uh, but I do think that it was a necessary transition to be able to capture exactly what a member does and how well he is, uh, how well he does it. You know, so understanding, you know, competency is very important uh, and that should place, we should have value on, comp uh, on competent individuals and how well they perform at doing their job. Uh, so that's most importantly. And in the past, uh, I know that we have not always been able to uh, capture that in a bullet style writing format. And so transitioning to an EPB, a narrative style, just gives us an opportunity to kind of expound on what it is that you're, uh, that you're good at doing. And so pulling that out and then kind of articulating that. So it's not, it's, it's not meant for you to try to take an entire 365 worth of uh, performance uh, and, and spell that on, out on paper, but it's, it, it is intended for you to capture the most relevant thing and the the best thing that you're good at or you were good at at that particular in that particular uh reporting period and break that down and align that with those mg uh those mgas mpas uh whichever one that you want to describe it as and so breaking those down and categor categorizing those is super important and so that allows you to now align what it is that you're doing and your primary duties and how it's being valued at that next level by leadership in the eyes of that leadership and so and simplifying that, getting away from a lot of the jargon, but simplifying that. So that's my overarching thought process on why we decided to transition from the uh, and why we transitioned from EPRs to EPBs to be able to capture that, uh, uh, to better capture that. So anyone, anyone else want to add to that? Sure, Chief. Um, awesome. So, you know, we're capturing, like the Chief said, we're capturing the most uh, relevant things that you've accomplished and and an important part that you all need to think of is the why. Why are we shifting over to this? Um, when I look at, you know, when, when you sit on a, a force distribution panel and you're looking at EPRs, um, let's say I'm the squadron pro suit, but I know who did what. But when I'm looking at two records and there's the person who coordinated the entire event, the person that, you know, thought of it, brought it to fruition, you know, presented the idea, rallied people behind it, ran the whole event the whole this that entire day um and then you have the people that you know willingly participated good on them they were they were there involved in it and when i'm looking at the two records and the bullets sound just about the same i'm not able to differentiate who i have on my team you know so when we're making these important decisions your epb needs to capture what you bring to the table um and so if you are that person, and that's why we don't need to list everything you did for the entirety of the 365. We need your narrative statements to truly describe what it is, what your contribution to the team is. So, you know, if you are the one that, you know, set the whole thing up from cradle to grave, um, then your, your narrative has to capture all those steps, everything that you put into it in order to, um, you know, in order to make that event or whatever the, the project was a success. And when I read that, I'm thinking, okay, I have someone who 
takes initiative, someone who can be like a project manager, someone I can hand something over, a vague idea, and they're going to develop it, and they're going to find the resources and the people? Um, or do I have someone, and there's, there's value in this as well, do I have someone who's going to be a willing participant, who will volunteer to be involved and will show up on time and be very helpful, but they may not be the person that has the idea. They may not be the one that carries the water on the whole thing. Um, and so that's why, you know, we're looking for you in within these major graded areas, um, and we can, you know, talk through those uh, in a little bit. Um, but within each of those major graded areas, what are the things that you bring to the equation? So as leaders, when we're looking at, you know, who's moving forward or who's being selected for different things, we should have an idea of what the team is comprised of after looking at the EPBs and seeing what you were able to do and what you're capable of doing um, to, to add to the fight. So, um, sorry, Graham, you have uh, some thoughts to add? Yeah, I killed it. Uh, so I, just for the transition purpose, uh, I truly believe the Air Force is giving back our greatest asset, and that's our time. Uh, when I first started looking at it and seeing how small it was, I thought it wasn't true. So being able, as we all said, to not capture the whole 365, but the highlights and then being able to focus on those and, and make them as strong as possible in a uh, plain English format um, allows. And once we it's a learning curve. It still took me a little time just, you know, tinkering with it. But once we get the hang of it, as we did with the previous EPR and the bullet format, I believe we're going to get a lot of our time back because we can highlight what we need to highlight and then we can move forward. But yeah, that's all I have on it. Okay, leaders, thank you so much for that. So I guess actually the first uh, free question is, uh, what would you guys say the best way to approach writing an EPB? Like what methods need to be implemented from the junior NCO level and approach and your approaches you wanna take, especially again, like we said, this is a new process. So what should we start doing early on to prepare ourselves for writing our EPBs. So, hey, um, I want to toss that one over to Sergeant Graham, if I if I if I may. I want to hear as a flight chief, uh, how do you coach up your your recruiters uh, to get them in that mindset of thinking about you know, hey, you got an EPR, EPB coming up, um, you know, and then I'll I'll pick it back off of that and. Because I'm curious, I'm curious as well. I have my own thoughts, but I'm curious as well. Yes, sir. Um, so what what I've done with the EPR and EPB, uh, one I keep it simple, right? We'll work on the formatting. We'll we'll work on making sure it fits where it needs to fit. But it's still the same process of gathering the data. And, and the most simplest form that I have my guys start with is I send them my records. Um, and I think everybody should look at their mentor's records or someone that they can uh, relate to because ultimately. The bullets or the narrative, however we want to say it, the, the information isn't going to change. We're going to recruit people. We're going to get new enlistment contracts. We're going to send them out to basic training. So getting that is a good starting. I mean, getting that uh, records is a good starting process to get your mind going and then start to think about how you're going to write your book. So what I do with my guys, I also I, uh, send them out. Every time we put in any kind of awards, I send it to them. Save this, save this, save this. And quarterly, I want them to be jotting down everything they've done. As uh, far as NECs, EADs, SW, whatever those uh, marks are that we're looking for, even with events, when we're at those events, just jot them down and actually gather that information. So when it is time for it to come to my level, which is you know normally two months prior, um, you've already pretty much got it filled out, and we're fine tuning it at that point. Uh, but yeah, definitely quarterly, get those bullets and, and any any opportunity. Even if it doesn't make it to the EPB now that EPB is smaller, it doesn't mean it isn't important. Get the information and then let's be able to um, pick and choose from there. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great point. Um, and, 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 and so for me, uh, everything that you said was spot on. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll also add to it is just, you know, hey, um, that relationship between uh, you and your supervisor is, 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 is utterly important to understand what the expectations are. And so for me, the best way you can approach it is sitting down and having clear, uh, concise expectations uh, between you and your supervisor and then outlining that a plan on, you know, hey, by the time our EPB come, rolls around, this is where I want to be. Where do you have me at, sir? So those initial feedbacks are super important, super important. So if you're not taking, and that's a way that you can take control of your career. 
is by uh, aggressively, I use that word loosely, but by deliberately, I should say, uh, sitting down with your supervisor and say, hey, sir, um, you know, these are my goals. These are my ambitions. Uh, this is how I'm going to contribute uh, to uh, to being a high performing, you know, uh, NCO. Uh, and what are your thoughts? Where do you have me at? And so there's no ambiguity there. So everything now becomes defined. And so along the way, you just follow that defined approach that you and your supervisor has set, set out and made that plan together. And then obviously, you know, you have touch points, those midterm follow-ups, those nonverbal uh, follow-ups between the two. Am I on track? So the best way for you to familiarize those things is to sit down, in my opinion, right, to sit down with your supervisor, understand those ALQs first and foremost, and where do you and, and which ones your where your skill sets at where your strengths are at, where your weaknesses are at, and then define that approach uh, together collectively with you and your, your supervisor along the way. Uh, anything to add over there, uh, Sergeant Brazil? Yes, yeah, so um, what, you know, those are some great points. Like it's all about preparation. Um, with this being a new process, you know, if we're talking about, you know, just how to write the best EPR, if we were, you know, a year ago and we're just talking about EPRs, um, you know, you would have a certain approach, but you also have to take into account this is a whole new process. So there's some research that you need to do. There, there are tools out there, you know, uh, as for seniors and chiefs, we, we got this early, you know, and they're like, all right, write an EPB, here's some reading material. And so before I could put pen to paper on anything, I really had to open up these documents, read through it, understand what the purpose was, um, understand what these major performance areas are talking about, um, the ALQs, your Airman leadership qualities, um, and how to correct, like, what are they looking for? Um, if you start writing your accomplishments just with the thinking of how you did an EPR and just say, well, I'm just going to write a narrative, you're going to miss the point because they're looking to hear certain things or the certain verbiage that you need to speak to in each one of these. So I'll go over those real quick. Um, you guys, hopefully you've all received um, these you know, this guidance through your leadership teams, um, you know, every, everyone has access to it as far as leadership. So if you don't have it or you lost email, you just auto delete stuff, um, just make sure you get your hands on this stuff. Um, but those major performance areas are executing the mission, leading people, managing resources and improving the unit. Um, everyone does these on some level, you know, at, at every rank. Now, of course, you know, the higher up in leadership, you're gonna have more of a direct impact on these things. Um, but within each one, those are your major performance areas. With each, within each one of those, you have these airman leadership qualities. Um, and we're looking for, for example, with executing the mission, um, it's about how you actually, you know, get the job done, your adaptability uh, to change. Um, hang on, I'm missing a third one. Chief, what's the third one I'm missing? It's the job uh, performance, the your adaptability. Initiative. Uh, which initiative, one did you? That's right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, so initiative. So, you know, again, if I go back to the example I mentioned earlier, you know, if there's a project, are you doing something that was tasked to you? Hey, so and so I need you to do X, Y and Z. Or did you identify a problem and say, you know what, I want to try and solve that. If you're really the one that had that original idea, make sure that bullet is talking to initiative that I saw a problem that needed to be solved and I worked through, I developed a team where we, you know, worked together to, to determine the root causes and then we developed this idea and, you know, you really want to capture what you actually did. Um, when it comes to leading people, it's about how you uh, foster cohesive teams, your communication, and then there's emotional intelligence. Um, these are some things you want to craft your bullets in a way that it's, it's explaining how you employ these things if you did. Um, and then uh, managing resources, it's about effectively and taking responsibility for action and behaviors to maximize organizational performance. Um, and then improving a unit, you're using critical uh, thinking and innovation to find solutions. Um, so as you're going through these, first and foremost, read through all the stuff. And then there's also um, examples of different bullets uh, that's, I'm not, sh hang on, I have it here. So, you know, if you're, if you're talking about there, there's five different levels, so to speak, and this is used more in terms of between the rater and the ratee um, to determine performance. There's the needs improvement, developing, proficient, highly proficient, and exceptionally skilled. And that's going to go in the range of 
as I just spoke spoke about the initiative and how much you're developing the idea and bringing it to you know forth to fruition um, versus if you're someone who let's say you're voluntold and you are a willing participant to something that might be down and needs improvement and that could be you know let's say you're brand new let's say we're talking about you know someone who's haven't quite figured some things out and they need to be walked through the process the bullet shouldn't read as if they had the whole idea and brought the whole thing forward um, so know yourself what you're bringing to the table understand what's being tasked of you here and craft your bullets in a way that accurately depicts what you brought to each one of these uh, statements that you're that you're highlighting yeah and if i can add something real quick to that uh Sam brazil brought up a great point uh these mpas uh you know super important uh you know that you familiarize yourself with this uh, the, these four graded areas, right? Because, you know, I asked a question uh, to some folks uh, and, and, and when I was delivering a brief uh, last week and very few of them, very few of them could tell me what those four uh, MPAs are. And so for me, I mean, at my level, is it more important to me to know that information or is it more important for you to understand that information? You know, so again, part of taking control of your career is understanding. And as Sergeant Bazil mentioned, hey, doing your research, understanding the new product that's out here, understanding how you align, you're aligning your the work that you're doing on a day to day basis with how you're going to be evaluated. And that's super important. So if you're executing the mission, how are you executing the mission? So in your day to day uh, in your day to day duties, you know, how did you adapt to a change? We adapt to change every day in this business. We're, we're utilizing some level of some form of resiliency to get over a change, whether it's a change at the MEPS, uh, whether it's a uh, whether it's something that happened uh, with a, 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 a ship they can that you are able to feel, you know. Uh, so looking at those things and figuring out how are you able to uh, adapt so that you were able, you know, and that it allowed you to execute your mission. And then the overall impact of that was something that it uh, impact had impact at the organization level or it had impact at the enterprise level, at AFRS level, because you filled a ship they can for AFRS or the Air Force level. So I'm just kind of breaking it down so that I can help. Hopefully we can start tying some of this stuff into what you do on a normal day to day basis, whether you're a tier one recruiter or tier two, uh, but kind of getting you to understand that so that you're thinking through it. And then before I move on for Sergeant Graham for his for his inputs is what are you giving your supervisor? What are you giving your supervisor? So part of capturing that data of what you're doing great is helping them help you. So if you're just waiting to the last minute to conjure up some stuff and you don't have a plan, if you haven't jotted this stuff down and capturing this stuff on a day to day basis, the greatness that you all are doing out here. Uh, then you're, you're making that job difficult for your supervisor who actually has more people to supervise where you're kind of just managing yourself, managing your business uh, in that day to day uh, basis. So just want to throw that out there over to you, Sean Graham. Yeah, to sum it all up is and, and as Chief went into it, effort. How much effort are you going to put into it? Um, I, I can tell when the EPB or EPR was done the night prior and when it's been uh, two to three months of preparation. Uh, I'm still going to do my part. You know, that's my job. And we had to sit down and talk about it because you knew that it was coming, you know, 10 months prior. But uh, the effort that you put into it, because ultimately it is your career. Um, it is your career and you have to take control. Um, every every EPB change, change, change email that came out, I studied it. I read it because I know that it's my job to not only take care of myself, but my my recruiters to ensure that I'm on top. Um, the chief and senior, they're going to be busy. They're not always going to be able to answer that question. Sometimes I need to actually look at it and then when I get with them for that question for clarity, I've already done my research. So it's a two minute conversation instead of a 20 minute conversation. Awesome. Thank you, leaders. Thank you so much for that input. Um, so I'm going to take these next three questions because they kind of run together and I know they were hit on. I'm going to kind of combine them just for the sake of time. Um, okay. So this is going to be kind of a three part question. Uh, so if you guys could discuss uh, the best practice for capturing the data 
um, and what tools we should use to do that. Because, you know, we have the bullet writing tools, the chat GPTs and things like that that are out there. But are these hindering or are these helping us? And then also you guys can add on there um, how early we should begin writing these EPDs. So, again, uh, the best practice for capturing the data, what tools are out there, such as the board charge, chat GPT, things like that, and how early we should start writing. All right. I jump right in for the uh, capturing data because that's kind of how my notes uh, intertwine with each other. But, you know, in this job, in this career, we have the best tool available. We have Africa's. Um, there is a report for any data point you need to make in Africa's. Will it take time? Yes. Do you have to familiarize yourself with it? Yes. But everything that you're writing, you have a metric to put it up against because Africa's will pull it for you or you have to pull it through Africa's. Um, so that, that's where I'm starting at. I'm starting at Africa's. I'm looking at my squadron. If I'm a, if I'm a recruiter getting my EPP ready for my uh, flight chief, and we're doing the numbers. We're doing who did the top NEC. I'm pulling the ammo for the quarter. I'm pulling the ammo for the year. I'm going line by line. I used to pull them out and highlight them, like whoever was close or who I was close to, and then get creative from that point. Once I actually, act, once I actually have the numbers, then you can do other tricks where uh, I like to uh, – I was a prior service bullet we wrote some years ago. It was one recruiter was like four out of five out of the whole squadron. So four doesn't sound like a lot for a year for prior service. You got to remember, this is going to be look. This, this is ah, the eyes that are looking at are not always pro soups, SEL, someone in recruiting. You may go back to your career field. So when I take that four out of five and put eighty percent of the squadron's prior service program, that changes the game, and that's where that effort and time comes in. Um, also, if it's something high level AFRS level, you want to look in the almanac on Ricky. Um, all the tools are available. Uh, but the, that that kind of sums up how to gather the data. As far as your events and, and school visits, ask those questions for historical data. Um, even if it's the same NASCAR that happens every year, how many people are watching? How many vendors are here? How much did all this cost? All those tangible numbers that we need to make it pop. We know that recruiters are going to events. We know we're going to NASCAR. But what made this year more important than last year? Um, how many more TV outlets did they have? How many more vehicles? All of those different tangible tangible data that you can utilize to stand out uh, as far as your chat gpts i, I just not I, i'm not i don't know um I, I don't like letting technology take away from our creativity um will i use it maybe if i'm getting stuck on something I, I used it once i tried it recently i tried it i paid a little dollar for the credit and it gave me 700 characters so <laughs> the time it took to generate that i, I just you know i kind of think of it my own way because you don't want to lose your creativity um, will it help if you're stuck? Absolutely, especially with the new EPV format. You know, it's 5,000 EPRs we can kind of jot bullets and take things from. But I'm just not a fan of it. Um, not saying it's a shortcut, not against it. If it works, it works. If y'all find a product that's working, I would at least try it. But I think it takes away from the creativity because you're typing into a data system what you've done when you were actually out in the field doing it. So you actually put eyes, you've seen the impact, you've seen things that you can relate more to. Um, I think that was it. That was two of the three. <laughs> yes, appreciate it, sir. Uh, I'll chime in if that's all right. Um, great points there. Um, I'm all about deep diving the data. Um, whenever I'm writing, I just start with a blank piece of paper and just start jotting down notes, just recapping. Um, now, obviously, you want to be keeping track all throughout the year. Um, but again, with this, we're not looking for every single thing you did. So the, uh, you know, you want to, as the year goes through, say, okay, this is the one that would really fit into this category, um, into this major uh, graded area. And you want to develop those notes. Um, when it comes to the data, um, great point on getting on Ricky, um, getting going through Afris. Um, but I want to talk to, you know, I, there's not just recruiters on the line. So the non ADRs out there. Um, Actually, I'm here at 360 Group headquarters, and you know I appreciate the the transparency and initiative. You know, I had someone point out that you know one of our support folks. Um, I really don't have a clear understanding of recruiting. I just came into this a few months ago. Um, I don't understand necessarily all the tiers. There's not a recruiting 101. I just know my job, whether it's finance, personnel, you know, uh, CST, um, and you don't, you may not know how you fit into the bigger picture. Um, and I encourage you to go talk to your operations folks, whether you're a squadron group, um, talk to the folks that have access to the data um, and get them to explain to you what your piece of, you know, how you fit into that 
uh, that, that puzzle um, and get them to provide you the data. So, you know, I've asked our ops and CEOs here to, you know, provide data to our ops and, uh, I'm sorry, our support folks in the building um, with some context of what this actually means in layman's terms. Um, but you need to have an understanding of what the mission, how you tie into the mission, because we're not doing anything without money, without uh, computers, you know, so, um, but I think some of our fo support folks miss out um, by not having the data that we have on our fingertips. We can go into Africa and say, oh, I did this compared to so-and-so. Um, so you got to open your mouth and ask questions and get some folks to uh, really help you provide a uh, data you need. Um, as far as the chat GBT stuff, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm old too, uh, just like Sarn Graham. Sorry to call you old, but um, I don't know. I, I haven't even, I don't even know what it is. I haven't opened it. So, you know, you guys can talk amongst you, you're 20 and 30 somethings out there. Um, I, I also like to just write myself because um, I don't want to sound the same as anybody else. And I don't want to sound the same as me from a year ago. Um, so honestly, I don't even look at the previous stuff. I just write from scratch each time and then I'll go back and make sure, you know, I'm, I'm capturing something different, but I just try to have a fresh perspective anytime I'm writing, um, bullets and I'm telling you until you look at records side by side, uh, you don't understand how similar some of these things come off and you need to distinguish yourself. So again, I, I'm not going to knock the new technology, um, but just make sure it's not giving you an output that sounds just like everybody else who hops on the same technology. Um, sometimes your own brain, your own creativity uh, will produce something that will make you stand out. Um, is there a third question? Uh, I'll toss it over to, to Chief and maybe you'll get that third one because I think we both answered too. The third one is uh, when should you start? I had just, I wrote it down. I had yeah. to flip through <laughs> Oh, gotcha. So, hey, I'll just start with the chat GPT. I mean, if y'all consider Sarn Graham and Sarn Brazil, oh, then I'm a dinosaur uh, sitting up on this platform. So uh, along with them, I have no clue. Uh, don't even try. Don't even attempt. Uh, I like to use the God gift and talents that I have, which is to think through that process on my own, uh, put it on paper and see how I can become uh, creative and innovative with trying to uh, clarify and translate, articulate on paper uh, what it is that I, you know, that I that I did, you know, uh, so whatever I'm trying to com convey, I'll play around with it. Some, but there's a million, you know, there's a plethora of things out there, tools to use. And then you can construct something at your, at your, uh, you know, uh, in your office uh, at the flight level, uh, you can reach out to ops. There's millions of products out here uh, that you can get creative with, with when it comes to kind of capturing that, uh, capturing data. Uh, so I, I'd say, you know, focus on, uh, though, again, going back to the four MPAs, breaking it down, even if you had to do an Excel spreadsheet, you know, and tab it out by those four MPAs. And then within that, just write down what it is that you think you did that allowed you to execute the mission. And then from there, how did you do it at the organization level, at the enterprise level, at the uh, Air Force level? And then, wow, if you can wow yourself, uh, then that means that, okay, well, somebody is going to capture somebody else's attention. And so go on from there, there on and there out. So just start there at a basic level. And then when you have that and when you get that product, you know, send it over to your flight chief, send it over to your supervisor, have them look at it and put them on notice so that they can give you the feedback. If they're unable to give you uh, corrective, constructive feedback, uh, then, you know, you guys need to start communicating a little bit more and you need to start holding them accountable, that supervisor accountable uh, to, to being able to provide you the effective feedback so that you know where you're at at all times and if you're on the right track. And then reach out. Again, you'll hear me often if you ever heard me brief to focus on, you know, find a mentor, you know, uh, 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 find somebody that, you know, you can sit down and you trust at one, uh, to review your records, get their input. Uh, and then somebody will have some tools in their toolkit that they can be able to show you. Uh, for me, mine may be a little antiquated and outdated, uh, just because of the new generation and new gen you know, innovative thoughts that are out there, but you can take what's already, that's already there and kind of build off of it on, on your own. So I'll, I'll just say that about the, the whole, uh, the apps, uh, that are out there. Uh, and, you know, everything else, everyone else said, I think that was spot on. And to add on to start in Brazil for our nine, eight hours and our eight hours, the big, you said the big picture, you know, what's the big picture? Sometimes when we are in that creative process, um, 
you know, the 8R for a specific squadron may only feel like he does or she does 8R um, phones for the squadron, right? But without those phones, what stops? What doesn't happen if the computer doesn't work? And that's where that thought process coming in comes in at because that's next level. The recruiter's no good without his phone or, 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 or computer. Every recruiter on this line know that we don't got that phone working or that computer, we in trouble. So when that support um, NCO is writing their package or getting help with it, Think of it from that level. Think of the work stoppage, true work stoppage, if a recruiter doesn't have his tools right? and write to that level. Or think to that level, and then let's refine it at the next level and at the next level. Awesome. Thank you, leaders. And then the final question before we open up um, in the next four minutes for uh, the questions in the chat, uh, we were, what have you all seen um, on EPBs that should be corrected or focused on, like mistakes. Um, we've heard in the past that recruiters use certain terminology that we probably shouldn't use because boards wouldn't understand it. Um, but what are some certain things that you see from recruiters EPBs that we should probably learn to steer away from to make it a more broad or vague understanding when it's going to a board? So with, with EPRs out the way and us writing it in narrative and plain English, Let's make sure we're actually spelling out the process. Uh, when I when I was looking at them, when I initially started recruiting, I didn't know what RIC meant. Uh, when I was, hey man, what does Rick mean? And it was just the abbreviation for recruiter or RCTR. However, everyone has their own thing, right? So now that we're able to actually spell it out, make sure that you spell it out. But however, capture it to uh, uh oh, uh, make sure that you're capturing everything. So. If you go back to your career field or we don't know who's looking at the boards, they don't know the importance of a gold badge. But if you put on there one squadron gold badge, FY22, top of the line, that doesn't paint that picture that someone needs to see. So with the narrative format, with us using less bullets, use those 250, 300 characters and actually be detailed. Uh, one squadron soul gold badge. Make sure you put that soul in there because that tells me as a reader, if I'm not an AR, that you're one. Now I want to see you put against how many recruiters and what did you do to do that? Um, cause we get caught up in our terminology, gold badge, silver. I don't know what silver badge is if I'm not a recruit. Um, I don't know the importance of it. silver badge sounds good, right? Gold badge. Okay. Is that a two year, you know, always right to the level that uh, 8R isn't looking at it. And I think that was the problem with some of the EPRs, even when I got here straight from CE and I'm asking for help and I'm reading these EPRs, like, I don't even know any CE. What does all this mean? I mean, I know it's a little harder than with EPRs trying to, crunch it, put it in the line, I get it. So now that we have the ability to actually write it out, make sure that we're using that space and, and let's eliminate, and I know one of the questions, let's eliminate the fluff. I don't need a big verb to tell me you was an except, exceptional super trooper. That's about 30 characters that we lost, right? I know you're exceptional, we already at that point. Use that 30 words to tell me exactly what you did so I don't have to think about it. Don't make me think, put it in my face, let me be able to read it plain and clear and then let us able, you know, when um, Sergeant Mazil was saying, if we got to match it up against somebody else, we don't have to think about what did you do. Uh, I don't, I don't, the, the verbs. And so I think that eliminates it. Uh, the new format eliminates some of the, a lot of the issues that we were having where it was just unreadable. Awesome. I'm going to tag on that um, and go down that same line of thinking. And I'm going to cheat here, use some of, you know, these tools that were provided to us. Um, you know, you want to paint a scene. Like he said, use all those characters to really paint a scene. And what this right here says, you know, um, a narrative generally uh, contains a scene. So context, the person, the action, the tool, instrument, um, how you achieve the action. Like you now have the opportunity where before you just had this one bullet and you're trying to cram as much as possible into that one bullet. You now have an opportunity to paint a clear picture of exactly what had happened. So there should be no question what your role was in this, what the work you put into it um, and what they're looking for is one action in these statements one actions and at least one of the following impact results in outcome so you have an opportunity to be more descriptive but you're still talking about that one action um, but you're able to provide the context of why this was such a big deal why is this important you know why does this matter what is this affecting um and you know to piggyback on his comment about you know the gold badge an example there would be you know you're now able to explain I was selected as the number one recruiter out of this many people um, who were competitive for it because I did X, Y, and Z. Um, and so the types of things that you know went into that 1206 that made you that person that was selected for gold badge, 
that those are the types of things that you can now pre create some context so the person reading it it's one thing that in a in a epr bullet if you're limited to just say number one of whatever um and you can't really describe all the work you did to put into it now you have that chance to say this is why i am that i was selected as the number one and why i should be the one that gets xyz whatever it is that epb is looking at uh, being looked at um to to decide so um and write real sentences. Um, I'll even say, stepping aside from the EPBs, you know, when we're looking at narrative style uh, 1206s, you know, we've gotten some practice now for, you know, a, a good number of quarters here as far as narrative style writing. And, you know, you still have folks that are not using proper punctuation. Um, they're not writing full state statements. It's written almost as if it's a bullet, but then you do have the punctuation and it just doesn't match. It doesn't make sense. Um, you know, call up your old English teacher and say, listen, I need you to help me with some of that stuff you taught me back in eighth grade because they want me to write sentences again. Um, but in, seriously, there are some there's some tools out here to break down some of that, you know, stuff that if you're not someone who's writing all the time and you're used to writing bullets can be kind of lost on you. So proper punctuation, proper sentence structure um, and really spell out everything that you're doing. Chief. Yeah, you hit it right on the uh, right on the. Uh, if I can tell you a pet peeve, it would be grammar, uh, and it would be proper punctuation. Uh, that's the pet peeve uh, that I see uh, uh, when these EPBs are flowing and in EPRs for that matter, you know, uh, flow across my desk. So I would say focus, pay attention to uh, what you're putting on paper and how it's translating. So from your thoughts to paper, pay attention to that. Uh, and then I also add, you want to isolate you know, one or two actions. Again, stay away from trying to uh, just oversaturate and capture all of the excellence of what what you achieved from that. When you think about it, a board wanna, wants to know more about what did you do? What did you actually do and how did that contribute to, uh, again, your organization, your team, the organization? What did it contribute to the Air Force as a whole? Focus on that, that big picture. And then if you were, as a result of that, if you were able to uh, garner some award or win something out of, that is great. But I think someone, you know, again, we we get caught up in a lot of the uh, hardware that we're able to to win here in recruiting because we do have an opportunity to win a lot of a lot of awards and that's super important right if we want to reinforce the desired behavior if we want to reinforce the outcome of people getting out here sacrificing for the mission we want to be able to reward that as such so that's important but now when it's time to translate that onto paper then it's important to understand that we want to just capture one significant thing something that's relevant and then we want to tie that into the most significant award that you accomplished at that uh, 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 in that period of time, if that makes sense. So quality over quantity, you know, so when it talks about readability, simplify it. We don't have to go simpler, but at least simplify so that it's in plain language. And so it also uh, speaks to the greatness that you actually did uh, in that particular uh, reporting period. Awesome. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Senior Brazil, and thank you, Matt Sergeant Rutland. Um, so we're going to roll into the uh, questions now, and anybody who's still on the call, if you could start to add your questions into the chat, we'll get through them as fast as possible, and anything we won't get to, we'll uh, keep, and then we'll send out to the leaders and see if we can get you an answer back. Um, so starting with the first one from a Sergeant Diaz at the 330th, uh, how relevant is education and volunteering considered now that we transition? Will there be any emphasis on this? I'm, I'm going to let Chief and Senior uh, dive deep into it. As for my level, yes, I want to see your education, um, especially with the tempo of the mission. If you still made time to do education, I think it's important to highlight that. As um, far as a board's perspective, that's, that's just out of my wheelhouse, so I'll let them speak on that one. I'll give my two cents. Now, Some I, I talked to Chief Rutland earlier, so I'm, I'm going to steal something he said to me, which was, yet to be seen how this is all gonna, you know, we, we kind of have to go through the first round of some things to see what jumps off the page, you know, what's, you know, we have our ideas based off of the materials that we're reading, um, but we haven't seen any promotions happen from <laughs> from these just yet. So we need to see what, what speaks to the board. And so this is gonna be a learning process for all of us. Um, but what I would say, um, look at the, 
you know, these ma major performance areas, right? Um, or major graded areas. So fit it where it makes sense. So let's say, you know, again, as I said, you have now the opportunity to really paint a picture of what you did. You know, if you're talking about, let's say, uh, managing resources and you're talking about your stewardship, you know, of resources, and let's say you're a degree uh, that you just completed your bachelor's and it's in something that, you know, aligns or helps you to be able to do that, you know, through the completion of a bachelor's of arts degree and yada, yada, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you can then, so you're, you're mentioning that achievement and tying it into how it helped you to better manage resources. Um, if you're talking about leading people, maybe the best example of how you led people was how you took on this huge project um, that was outside of your, you know, your normal duties, um, but it's something that had huge impacts. Um, you know, let's say, for example, uh, you know, we have a women's symposium every year. Let's say you're really involved in the planning and, you know, putting that all together. That's not your job. You know, you're not required to be a part of that, but that is some volunteer work. Um, and you can use that to capture how you led people. You gathered this many people in a team and you delegated uh, responsibilities to, to certain individuals and you came together and this is how the event went. And there were this many people that attended um, and you were able to bring in the, these paddle members. Like you can now paint a picture of everything that you did to bring it to fruition. So when it comes to that volunteer work, the education, it needs to tie into these. Whereas before, just getting the degree was a bullet. No, we're not looking for that anymore. We need to know how this ties into these uh, major graded areas and how it reflects um, these airman leadership qualities. Strong point there, Sergeant Brazil. Hey, I'll tell you this. Uh, let's let's you know when you focus on you know where you're at, what you're being asked to do. Uh, you also want to consider the level that you're 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 performing these duties at. So if you're a tier one recruiter. My expectations for you is to perform your job and be great at performing your job. That's what I brought you in here for. I brought you in here to execute your at that mission at that tactical level. So as an NCO, that's that's the expectation. So when we have these board exercises, I want I also I place emphasis on uh, my supervisors uh, for their level of thinking to say, hey, when it comes to the education, these are degrees of separation when everything else is all the other blocks have been checked. So if you focus on that, the board charge basically tells you focus on a member's performance and their primary duties. That's where 90 percent of the, 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 the scoring will take place. Now, when you have somebody that's excellent across the board and there's a sustained excellence and everybody's great. Now we have to, by filtration, we have to start looking at degrees of separation, but not just any degree, but how you took that degree and you tied it back into, uh, you know, what did you bring back to the organization? How did you affect that team? How were you able to impact uh, the mission by utilizing that degree? Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that if we're in recruiting and you don't have, you know, and you don't necessarily have an HR degree, but you have some degree where you can utilize leadership skills and your leadership skills or your ability to get out and, and, and talk your public, uh, 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 what I'm trying to think of, you know, uh, your public speaking skills have allowed you to teach and shadow others and show them how to get over certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, introvert, you know, ways, you know, uh, I don't know how to, the words to use, but I'm just trying to get you to understand that, you know, when that degree comes into play, at least at my level, I'm only looking at those things from a degree of separation when you've checked all the boxes. In external, in, uh, external and internal leadership, I'm looking at that. You know, hey, you did your job. That's a membership level for me. That's what we expect every recruiter, every, every, every Linko, every CST, every, every NCO, every senior NCO, uh, when we come into work, that's where our job, we're operating at a membership level. Then somewhere along the lines, we start to separate ourselves through greatness, by our sacrifice, by tying it in and buying into the mission and going over and beyond. So through that, we start to exceed those expectations of our leaders. Now, when all those boxes are checked, then the one that actually has that bachelor's degree and the individual that doesn't, we have to consider that. 
the one that has their master's degree. We have to consider that. So that is important when it when all other things are already uh, are aligned uh, with uh, sustained excellence. That's my that's. My. Oh, thank you, Chief. Um, next question. Um, this is from Mass Sergeant uh, Hanson at the three thirtieth. Should the HLR statement at the end be a final output job statement like the EPRs prior? or should it be a conclusion statement regarding future leadership roles and et cetera? I tell you, um, so just viewing a few of them, I've seen them come in many different ways. So as Sergeant Bazil said, hey, until we go through this first round, uh, you know, we won't know, we'll, we'll wait on the feedback, we'll wait and see what worked, what didn't work. Uh, we know there are some things, some, 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 some small, uh, nuances that need to be uh, kind of corrected to get to get to right to where we want to go. So we're in this first phase of this and it's OK. I would tell you, um, you know, your leadership within your within your unit, they should determine what that looks like. And then it should be consistent across the organization. That's the most important thing to me. So if you're going to focus on talking about OK, this member, you know, this was which said a completed sta uh, a conclusion statement. Yes, sir. Or um, output of uh, future roles or should it be um, a conclusion statement regarding future leadership? Yeah. So it be an output job statement. Um, I can't tell you. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you. For me, I focus on uh, I look at that last one and I say, hey, the individuals that I know that are. Performing at a at a level that uh, we're looking to increase their next level responsibilities, I am going to ensure that we add that to that because this is how we start to create degrees of separation. Uh, so when you go back and you look at the levels of proficiency, right, you talk about people that need improvement, that are developing, those that need improvement, they're subpar, then they're highly proficient, uh, and then there's exceptional. So everybody can't be exceptional. So that HLR statement should be where we start to create that huge, that distinctive degree of separation between those that are exceptional and those that are just, you know, getting the job done and those that are just coming in here operating that, the, that are operating at the membership level. So the way that I would advise the commander is to look at, hey, sir, this is kind of how we're going to operate within the unit. We're going to use that HLR statement to, to, to create that huge degree of separation uh, between the people that we're looking at pushing to that next, you know, uh, promoting for pushing to promote to that next level uh, of increased responsibilities, if that makes sense. Yes, Chief, thank you. That actually makes a lot of sense. That's good to go on that one. Um, we'll jump to the next question from uh, Sergeant Diaz, also from the 330, uh, kind of from the other one. He's also, uh, I guess it's in addition to the first question about how relevant is education. Um, also is including a reward, awards, one in EPB's beneficial, such as silver badge, top eight hour support, um, standard of excellence and whatnot. And does this add to the EPB or is it taken away from it when you add those awards? I would say certainly capture, you know, how you are recognized. Um, but as we talked about earlier in the conversation, provide the context, you know, if you put top eight R support on an EPB, who knows what that is? You know, somebody be scratching their head like I have no idea what you're talking about here. Um, describe what it is that you that you won and why it matters and, and give the context of who else was eligible for it, you know, what it took to, to win that award. Um, you know, I should be able to read that EPB and have an understanding of why this matters. Um, and so instead of focusing on the title of what that award was, honestly, the, even, even on EPRs, there were times when I didn't even write the title of the actual award, I would paint as clear a picture as possible of selected as the number one this because of you know whatever um so yes definitely identify that you were you know selected for whatever award um it is but but provide context and, and spell it out so it's dummy proof that anybody reading this has a clear understanding of what exactly you won uh, from that award and and why you were the person that was selected thank you senior appreciate that and then uh, to close out, there's a final question we have. Um, this is in addition to the education one. I believe, uh, Chief, and you hinted at this 
a little earlier, but additionally, for those who have received higher education due to its previous emphasis on our career advancement, is that at all reviewed or considered at the board level? Do they take any heed of that since it was such important in the prior process? And again, it just depends on who we, who we're talking about. If we're talking about a staff sergeant, uh, and you know, um, you know, and again, all right, let me let me put my thoughts into into uh, uh, focus here. So when we start talking about EFD panels, okay, I'll, I'll I'll just think about it in that sense. When we bring those supervisors together and we give that 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 board charge, so that we can kind of create the level of understanding and place value on what it is that we that we're uh, that we're reviewing, uh, I will say higher level education again, because this exercise that we do partic particularly in my squadron, right? Uh, I sent out a spreadsheet and it has every category of what I want, you know, my supervisors to kind of look at and consider when they're reviewing these, uh, when they're re reviewing these packages. And so at the very end here, you have education, you have certification at the very front, we have prime, you know, excellence, sustained excellence, external and internal leadership, uh, you know, uh, organization. Have they uh, participated in any external or internal uh, leadership organizations? What what uh, position did they hold? And so again, so on and so forth. Then you start looking at, hey, what was their what was their the awards that they've won in that you know uh, serving in that position? Whether it's silver badge, whether it's gold badge, whether it's a uh, uh, I'm, I'm more so concerned, I'm more so uh, enlightened to know Airmen, hold Airmen Awards, NCO of the Quarter, Senior NCO of the Quarter, uh, those awards uh, as well, Saijan, all of these, hold Airmen, those things that can be um, that can be well uh, readily recognized outside of our AFSC, those things are super important. And then you get to, like I said, it goes back to saying, hey, degrees at the, at the end of the day. So if I can go through every single one of these, and I have three or five, three to five airmen, big A, uh, that are all checked off all of these boxes. Then again, it leads me down the path where I now have to look at these degrees of separation to see that who was able to do all of these things and then also accomplish uh, and improve themselves from a, you know, uh, from a professional, uh, personal standpoint. And that's that's important to me because then it becomes impressive. Uh, but at the next level, when you start talking about, you know, if we get into talking about uh, senior NCO level, when you start talking about competing for senior and chief, uh, then that's, you know, that's a whole different that's a whole different conversation, you know, entering into that senior, that senior NCO uh, tier and how that's, you know, perceived perceived. I'm gonna, oh, and I'm going to add. Oh, sorry. If I could real quick, I'm gonna just add um, just a, a flip side of that. I'm saying the same thing as chief. I'm just giving a different perspective. If I'm looking at job performance and this individual is here and this other individual is here and this one has whatever level of education that should not then tip the scales and say well but now they're kind of equivalent because this one has a degree this doesn't bring up your job performance we have to look at the job performance and then like he says net you know when you're looking to see eh, they're really close what is going to tip the scales one way or the other that's when you look at those other things but we can't offset you know, how you do your job with, oh, but they have this degree, oh, but they volunteer for X, Y, and Z. Um, we have to make our initial pass based off of uh, job performance. Yeah, no, that, and, and that's a good point to add to what you added to me to add back to you. <laughs> uh, I don't want people to kind of think that we're over here, you know, doing this, you know, trying to cut and slice and dice uh, between excellence and greatness. In other words, there's no value that I'm going to place on somebody that won senior NCO of the year and somebody that won Lance P. Sajan, you know. So when I start looking at whole airman concept, I start taking those things into consideration. But I don't prioritize, you know, unless it gets to a point to where we start looking at somebody's neck and neck. And we do have those occasions, those rare occasions where we have these, you know, these people, you know, they're just unicorns. I mean, they hit everything, you know, and so. But outside of that, if you won NCO of the quarter, I place value on that. If you won senior NCO of the year, I place value on that. Now, when you go from squadron level to group level, now I have to place value on that because I look at the impact and where that award um, was uh, received at. 
same as a at the AFRS level. So again, organization, enterprise, Air Force level. So we start looking at that. So we have to place value on those things. Uh, but then I take the, the well-rounded look at the individual's uh, entire record and I look for that sustained excellence. Now, things that we probably won't ever you know, talk about or get to dig too deep in is the experience, is the time on team, you know, talent management. All of those things are important. We can't get around that. But at that tactical level, when we start talking about a tier one recruiter, tier, you know, tier two recruiter, I, I'm, I, I want to place heavy emphasis on I just need you guys to perfect your job. I need you guys to focus on being great at your job. And if being great at your job doesn't necessarily translate into you winning an award, still be able to, 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 to capture that as best as possible uh, on your records. And this is where you definitely need to be sitting down and having feedback, constant feedback with your supervisor, because if they don't know how to translate that for you, because I get it. Some of us, you know, if we're out in the field, we may be in AORs that historically, you know, it's tough. So those things are not necessarily just going to fall in our lap all the time. Well, that supervisor needs to be fully engaged and he needs to be seeking input from his uh, from his senior leadership to find out, hey, what's being valued at that level so he can come back down here and provide you that feedback so he can help you align a career, uh, a development plan to keep you on par and still focus on trying to, you know, get to get to recognize uh, appropriately. So I tied up with that. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I hope everyone on, on the call got a lot out of this presentation because I know I sure did. Um, it was great seeing it from that tactical, that operational, that strategic level. Um, a big thing I took away from that is make sure you can highlight what you're doing at your job and what separates you primary duties first and everything else can be stacked on top afterwards. But make sure you're doing your job that the Air Force hired you for and articulate that. Um, so we're going to close out with that. But before we do, I want to go ahead and give closing remarks um, to uh, Master Sergeant Graham, Senior Brazil, and then to Chief Rutland um, before we close out. And then we're going to close out after that team. Um, so Master Sergeant Rutland, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Master Sergeant Graham, any closing remarks from you, sir? Just uh, <clears throat> take the information. Hopefully it provided some value um, and, and execute. And my email is on there. I'm all over there. Somebody already sent me like two, three emails. I send my records out. I will. I'm here to help. Um, I don't throw that out there. Just throw it out. So if you need some help, give me some time. You know, we, we like recruiters, you know, give me 24 to 48 hours to respond. But shoot me an email. And I would definitely um, I'll give you all that I have and let you, you know, navigate for yourself. But no, thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Sir, senior. Uh, same here. You know, I appreciate you all tuning in. Um, you know, sometimes, like I said, there's opportunities and you don't see a, a lot of folks in here. Um, so I'm really thrilled at how many people um, prioritize, uh, you know, trying to figure out this process and taking care of yourself. Um, I've heard it time and time again, nobody's going to take care of you better than you. Um, so the more that you understand uh, what's what your record needs to contain, um, the better you can take care of yourself and, and, and be that person that is well reflected in the records that you have. Um, so uh, same as same as Sergeant Graham. Listen, I, I'm, I'm Dana Bazil, the only one in the Air Force, maybe the only one in the world. So feel free to reach out if there's anything um, I can help you with. Um, you know, just hit me up by email and I'll be glad to, to assist in any way I can. But good luck out there. Let's get after FY24. Thank you, senior. Chief. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, again, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to fellowship and partner with some uh, with this forum uh, to the leaders in the room. Hey, take control of your career. You know, don't wait uh, till it's late and then expect somebody to put more into it than what you're willing to give uh, for yourself. And then seek out, seek out an opportunity. Three things that I always tell people I leave them with. You need a mentor. You need a, you need a coach and you need a sponsor. If you ever talk to me for longer than 15 minutes, I'm going to ask those questions. Do you have a mentor? Do you have a coach? Do you have a sponsor? A mentor, somebody to speak to you. A coach, somebody to speak with you, to go through it with you. And then a sponsor, somebody that can advocate on your behalf when you're not in that room. You need. They can possibly be three of those, three uh, separate individuals, or it can be one person that fit every single one of those categories. But that's super important. There's somebody that uh, has already been in your uh, shoes, uh, and so if you're trying to get to where they're currently at, then seek out an opportunity to be mentored by those individuals so that they can give you the benefit of their, their experience and then help groom you so that you can have the benefit of your own experience as you get through these uh, uh, this complicated era 
with them recruiting. So uh, with that, again, I, pre I appreciate you guys' time. That is awesome. Thank you for those proverbs, Chief. On behalf of the five six, we thank you all uh, for joining. Thank you, uh, Sergeant George, for uh, introducing us to these great speakers. And if everybody looking to access this presentation, it will be on the five six YouTube, and an email will be sent out following this presentation. Thank you all for logging on. You guys have a great day.